my topic for today is uh, not something that is unfamiliar uh, for many of us we've heard uh, and uh, the psalm is a psalm that is very very close to many of our hearts i don't think we need any guesses it's psalm 23 wonderful and uh, you know it's exciting because right from uh, when we were small you know there were two scriptures that most of us knew you know even as we were in uh, sunday school one was john 316 yeah we all know that the second one was the lord's prayer and the third one was psalm 23 so let's get excited this morning let's prepare our hearts uh, and let's allow the lord to speak to us amen we'll just begin with a short word of prayer father this morning we want to thank you for another opportunity that you have given us lord to come together gather like this as a community lord to worship you to thank you to express lord our gratitude as well as to hear what you have to speak to us and so father i just pray that uh, may we give undivided attention to your word this morning remove all distractions remove everything that is weighing on our hearts and lord we just pray this morning that uh, our ears will be tuned for what you have to speak to us lord speak to us through your word and lord we pray and we believe that this morning even as you speak to us lord that your word will set us free lord lord that your word will bring faith your word will bring hope lord your word lord will reveal more of your character to us and your word will enable us to trust you even more father so we thank you in jesus name amen so psalm 23 and uh, we all know this beautiful psalm and i'm going to try to take us through uh, verse by verse i'm going to endeavor to do that i just pray that uh, you know as joshua prayed that let the sun stand still i'm going to pray that time will stand still so that i'll be able to finish my message anyway so okay cool let's go ahead so the theme of psalm 23 yeah the theme of the psalm 23 and we all know that david wrote this psalm now the theme of the psalm is a confidence that david had in the lord's care yeah that david had in the lord's care that david had a confidence and therefore this is out of a place of that confidence that he had that god really cares for him yeah and uh, king david was expressing his feelings and we all know that uh, the situation was such that his son absalom is after him to actually kill him to dethrone him and we see that uh, david is is running from absalom and the bible says that he found refuge with a shepherd david ran and found refuge with a shepherd and this is a reflection of god's goodness and god's kindness that david experienced and therefore he wrote this psalm so david experienced god's loving kindness and david experienced god's guidance yeah through this time and that's when he wrote this psalm yeah and i'm going to read it for you and then we will get into it beginning at verse 1 the lord is my shepherd i shall not want he makes me to lie down in green pastures he leads me beside the still waters he restores my soul he leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake ye do i walk through the valley of the shadow of death i will fear no evil for you are with me your rod and your staff they comfort me you prepare was five you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies you anoint my head with oil 
my cup runs over surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and i will dwell in the house of the lord forever and ever amen so if you look at this psalm you know there are four distinct things actually that come out uh and i'm going to to state it and then i'm going to go verse by verse the first thing is this that the lord cares for us amen that's good news in the time that we are living in yeah to hear these wonderful soothing words that the lord cares for us amen the second thing that we see in this psalm is that the lord provides for us so many of us are going through uncertainties you know we started with the pandemic and this march it will be actually 24 months we be in this pandemic it's been uncertain times for some of us but we are going to understand through this scripture that the lord provides for us so he cares for us he provides for us the third thing that we see through the psalm is that he is the one who guides us he is the one who guides us when we are on on the brink of making decisions and we don't know where to go or what step we need to take further the bible says that the lord guides us and the fourth thing that we see in the psalm is that he protects us amen he cares for us he provides for us he guides us and he protects us cares provides guides and protects you know i don't think that there is anything that we need beyond this amen but let's go ahead okay so as a shepherd cares for his sheep in the same manner in the same manner the lord who is our good shepherd cares for us you know this is a beautiful uh uh relationship that we see in the psalm of a shepherd and a sheep okay a shepherd and a sheep and whenever we uh, think of a shepherd and a sheep it talks about a great intimacy it talks about a very close relationship yeah so first thing is that the lord cares for us yeah so a shepherd is committed to his sheep to guide the sheep to protect the sheep and to attend to the needs of the sheep and in a sense that also involves a watching over that a shepherd does over his flock of sheep and that's so good news for us so we're going to begin at verse 1 the lord is my shepherd now the word the lord is mentioned here and it's often transliterated as yahweh or even jehova and this is the biblical name of the covenant keeping god of israel a god of israel or a god is a covenant keeping god even though we fall short and even though we don't love him always he continues to love us now david knew by personal experience that yahweh or jehova or the lord that he talks about here he is the shepherd of his people and that he cares for all their needs and so this morning i want to tell you that the lord cares for all your needs and so when david was a shepherd boy you know david himself cared for his sheep and he makes sure that all their needs were met in a similar fashion the lord cared for david who was lacking nothing and in the same manner we as believers too can be sure that the lord who is our good shepherd meets all our needs amen our god who is our good shepherd meets all our needs even as we progress today's message very often you would hear me saying good shepherd good shepherd and that's intentional that i am saying it then it says that we shall not want the lord is my shepherd we shall not want 
Now, this is an interesting name for the Lord, which is found in Genesis chapter 22, verse 14. We all know, or most of us know this entire account, where God is testing Abraham. And God tells Abraham, you got to take your son Isaac and offer him as a sacrifice. We knew how dear Isaac was to Abraham. Okay. Anyway, and it says here, so when Abraham is taking Isaac to the altar to sacrifice him, Isaac is wondering, where is the sacrifice? Okay. But Abraham was obedient to God. Yeah. And so the Bible says that when God saw Abraham being obedient, what did he do? He provided a sacrifice in the form of a ram in a thicket. Abraham was promptly willing to sacrifice his son, but God provided a sacrifice for Abraham. So the Bible says that Abraham promptly sacrificed the ram that was in the thicket that was provided by God himself. And there was the meaning of the word Jehovah Jireh, which means the Lord will provide. That's one of the compounded names of God. Jehovah Jireh, the Lord will provide. And I want to tell every family that is here, be of good cheer. The Lord will provide. Amen. The Lord will provide. So we will not lack in whatever we need because God is not only our creator, but he is also our sustainer. He is our good shepherd. He not only knows what we need, but he is more than able to provide all that we need. You want to say an amen to that? You could do a thumbs up wherever you are. Fantastic. So he is our creator. He is our sustainer. He is our good shepherd who not only knows what your need is, but he is well able to provide our need. Let's go ahead. He says, he makes me lie down in green pastures, verse 2, and he leads me beside still waters. Now, David writes, that the Lord provides rest in green pastures and guides him into still waters. What is green pastures and what does still waters signify? Well, green pastures and still waters signify peaceful places, places of rest and places of feeding as the shepherd takes their sheep to graze. Amen. Places of rest and places of feeding. Probably many of us here are restless because of whatever we are going through. The Lord wants to give you his rest. Amen. So shepherds in the biblical times, you know, they didn't drive their sheep. But they walked ahead of the flock and the flock followed the shepherd. So the shepherd was ahead and the sheep or the flock followed. We also see that the land of Israel did not have plentiful or rich pasture land, except when it was raining. Therefore, therefore, it was the responsibility of the shepherd to guide the sheep where? To green pastures. Otherwise, the sheep would go hungry. So the responsibility of the shepherd to guide the sheep to green pastures was the shepherd's responsibility. Further, we see that sheep would not drink from rushing streams, nor would they seek out for clean water. They were prone to drinking whatever was nearby. Therefore, it was the responsibility of a good shepherd to lead his sheep to calm clean waters, not only to green pastures. So the shepherd's responsibility was not only to lead the sheep to green pastures, but even to calm 
clean waters. As a good shepherd, the Lord guided David to green pastures. He provided well for David, giving him abundance, giving him rest, giving him peace, giving him abundance, giving him rest, giving him peace. I believe that many of us here require abundance, require peace, and require rest. So Jesus, the good shepherd, provides all of this care to every one of us who believe in him. He gives us rest. He gives us rest. Somebody out there, he gives us rest. Matthew chapter 11, verse 28 says, Come to me, all ye who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. If there's somebody here, you're heavy laden, come to your good shepherd. This morning, he wants to give you rest. The good shepherd gives us an abundance. Philippians chapter 4 verse 19 says, And my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. If you are struggling or battling a lack in your life, this morning I want to tell you that the good shepherd wants to give you his abundance. The third thing, he gives us his peace. The good shepherd gives us his peace. John chapter 14, verse 27 says, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives that I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled. Neither let it be afraid. My peace I give to you. If there's anyone here, you know, you're struggling with no peace in your life. This morning, the Lord wants to tell you that he wants to give you his peace. So the good shepherd provides for his followers or his believers. He gives us rest. He gives us abundance. And he gives us his peace. So just as a shepherd in the Bible times knew his sheep by name, so our good shepherd knows us personally and calls us by name. You know, in John chapter 10, that entire verse right up to 9 and it talks about Jesus being our good shepherd. And he says that he knows us by our name. He knows us by our name. So we should be quick to heed his call and follow him. So let's not be anxious. You know, uh, in Matthew chapter 6, verse 33 says, let not be anxious of what we will drink, what we will eat, what we will wear. But let's seek his kingdom first and his righteousness. And everything else that we need will be added unto us. Okay. Next, he says that he restores my soul. We are in verse 3. He restores my soul. Now, the Lord is the one who gives us strength. And here, the strength actually talks about vitality. The strength that is mentioned here talks about vitality. He restores my soul. It talks about the Lord gives us strength. Vitality is a state of being full of energy. Vitality is a state of being full of energy. Maybe you're tired this morning. The Lord wants to restore you. The Lord wants to give you strength. The Lord wants to give you vitality. Now, David credits the Lord, his shepherd, with restoring or refreshing his soul. In the Bible times, if a sheep became injured, its shepherd would treat its wounds until it's healed. Likewise, so often, the Lord restores us to good spiritual health after the evil world has hurt us. Or even sometimes we may hurt ourselves by failing to follow the Lord closely. Sometimes we may fail to follow the Lord closely. 
but the lord wants to restore strength the lord wants to restore vitality you know we see in john chapter 21 verse 15 to 19 john chapter 21 verse 15 to 19 it talks about how jesus restores peter he says do you love me and feed my sheep do you remember that whole account but it says that peter was the one who relied upon himself but he failed miserably but he failed miserably in the overconfidence that he had but the good shepherd graciously restored him back to spiritual health maybe there are some of us here this morning for whatever reasons we may have grown cold there may be some of us here who probably may have lost our first love there may be some of us here who probably need to work on our priorities or different situations or different things have taken the better of us the lord wants to restore us back to him he is a good shepherd let's go ahead it says he leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake so sheep were accustomed to following the shepherd in familiar paths you know when you walk on that same particular path what happens it automatically forms a road am i right you know if you are in a grass and if you are walking on the same path what happens automatically you see that a path is formed okay so the sheep were accustomed to following the shepherd in familiar path or familiar grounds but there were often times where the sheep would stray away and get lost then the shepherd would leave the rest of the sheep in the custody of helpers and what would go searching for the lost sheep jesus the good shepherd it says once again i said the good shepherd and i want us to remember this that our jesus is a good shepherd he leads us he leads us in paths of righteousness but we may wander from the chosen path then jesus searches until he finds us and restores us that's good news for some of us here that if we are feeling lost a good shepherd will never give up on us he will come after us he will search for us he will find us and he will restore us back we see the account in luke chapter 15 you know it talks about the lost sheep the lost coin you know the lost son and here jesus told a parable about a shepherd who had 100 sheep but when one was astray he searched for it until he found it then he laid it on his shoulders brought it home and summoned his friend and neighbors to celebrate its victory with him and so therefore this is our good shepherd he restores our soul he leads us in paths of righteousness for his name's sake for his name's sake it's so beautifully written for his name's sake it's only so that we will always fulfill what is his purpose for us in our lives let's go ahead we are on verse 4 i'm checking my time ye do i walk to the valley of the shadow of death i will fear no evil what does the valley of the shadow of death mean in our scenario today well it symbolizes the world it symbolizes darkness and death and we will go through those challenges in our lives we will never always be in the place where we are on the mountains but we will go through those valleys and do you know something this good news god has prepared that for us because there is something that he wants to reveal even 
when we go through those valleys and we will see that in scripture it's beautiful just be with me so david could walk through the dark ravine or the valley perhaps even death fearlessly you know why <laughs> only because the lord walked with him he would never be able to do it in his own strength but he didn't fear because the lord himself walked with him david explains this his lack of fear was because he says you are with me you know the scripture says for you are with me i will not fear for you are with me now there's a transition be with me it's a little minute but hold it closely it says it is interesting to observe that the shadow of death draw drew david closer to the lord the shadow of death or the difficult paths or those testing times drew david closer to the lord why because in that scenario he says you are with me he addresses it personally you are with me okay but it says that in the peaceful places it says he leads me beside still waters he restores my soul so from a place in still waters yeah or in the green pastures he says he but in the valley of the shadow of death he says you are you with me did you get that and so therefore it says that this talks about something that is more personal that he was able to recognize or that drew him more closer to continue to learn to love and to be dependent upon the lord where in the valley experiences amen god takes us through those valley experiences god will take us if you haven't i want to tell you good news you will go through <laughs> you will but even there the lord will be with you you will never be alone amen so in life we will be faced with challenges we will go through struggles and i want to tell you it's not optional but even in the midst of those difficult times of our life we need not fear because god is always with us god is always with us if you are with your family you can just turn around and tell them god is always with us amen yeah god is always with us yes he has promised to be with us wherever we go and then we go on it says your rod and your staff they comfort me a shepherd you know always carry these tools with him the rod and the staff okay and this was what for what not for himself but it was to protect the sheep the rod and the staff were to protect the sheep so the rod was a short you know heavy stick you know something like a baton that we see that is what the rod was and this this was worn at the shepherd's belt and the staff the staff was a long lightweight pole and it had a curved end so there was a rod and a staff that the shepherd used to move the sheep yeah when they had finished grazing to count the sheep to know whether the one is lost or not and to examine the sheep when they were back into the fold so both the rod and the staff were used as weapons to protect the sheep david trusted the lord to protect him just as the shepherd protected his sheep from any attacking animals remember jesus the good shepherd is with us at all times jesus the good shepherd is with us all times he promised to be with us always you know matthew chapter 28 verse 20 says that he will be with us till the end of time he is with us when we walk over rough ground as surely as he is with us 
even when we are beside still waters. And in John chapter 10, verse 28, he says, I give them eternal life and they will never perish and no one will snatch them out of my hand. This is our good shepherd. He is always with us. Our good shepherd is always with us. The staff and the rod are part of the same tool. And it's important to know that his rod and his staff, they remind us. The rod and the staff, yeah, it's tools that he has to protect us. And what does it remind us of? It reminds us of everlasting faithfulness and his love. The rod and the staff reminds us of his everlasting utsav, everlasting faithfulness and his love. As children of God, we can take a deep breath knowing that he is always with us. He is always protecting us. He is always guiding us and always offering us a place of peace and rest. I'm going to try to close this very quickly. It says in the next verse, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Now, David compares the Lord's generosity to that of a shepherd who generously prepares a feast for his sheep, spreading the food on a table or a trough. And as the sheep slept, the sheep slept, they were protected. You know, if you see old pictures, you know, we see a stone wall, you know, like an arch or a round, you know, but without a wall, without a wall. And what would the shepherd do? The shepherd would be at that gate giving watch over the sheep who were inside. That's our shepherd. That's the good shepherd. It says, and he, Jesus identified himself as the door to the sheepfold, as it is mentioned in John chapter 10, verse 7 and 9. You anoint my head with oil. A gracious host would anoint his guests as applying a soothing oil to the guest's head. But here, if we are talking about a shepherd and a sheep, a shepherd would use oil to treat the sheep's wound. That's what the oil was used to treat the sheep's wound. If we are wounded for whatever reasons, the Lord wants to put that oil upon us. He wants to apply that soothing upon our wounds. David may have been thinking about the Lord as his host or shepherd when he wrote, you anoint my head with oil. So you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. And then it says, my cup runneth over. You know, if you see a cup and if you imagine it running over. So what does it think of? It doesn't talk about just being filled, but it talks about being filled to the brim and overflowing. This is how our good shepherd thinks of us. So the cup David depicts of is as overflowing, may refer to a brimming cup the host provided or to a large cup a shepherd used to give water to his thirsty sheep. In either ways, the interpretation leads us to the conclusion that the Lord provides for us more generously than our heart's desire. So when you ask of the Lord, he just doesn't merely provide for you. Hello. When you ask of the Lord, the Lord doesn't merely provide for you, but he says he gives you beyond what you ask. He gives you beyond what you need. And that's what it says. The Hebrew Bible, it means here, my cup runneth over. It means this, 
that I have more than enough for my needs. I have more than enough for my needs. The Lord is able to bless you even beyond what you need. He's your good shepherd. And finally, in closing, you can take a deep breath because I'm finishing now. It says, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. You know, we see in Psalm 23, we learn that, you know, there's an existence of a very close and an inseparable relationship between who? The good shepherd, our Lord Jesus, the good shepherd and his sheep, we who are his sheep. It's an unbreakable bond that unites them. We are in a relationship with our Jesus, which can never be broken. Amen. Nothing can separate us from his love, beloved. Nothing. And so it says, you know, the very key verses here, if you could just give me five minutes, I'm trying to close this here. It says in verse six, you know, it reinforces this truth. And makes it abundantly clear. The word word, surely. When you hear the word surely, there is no iota of a doubt. It says surely. There should be no doubt. There should be no unwavering assurance. It's an unwavering assurance that God has said that goodness and mercy will follow. That goodness will mercy. It talks about a irrevocable covenanted love and his abundant goodness towards us. A irrevocable covenanted love, a love that can never be taken back. A love that has been poured out that can never be taken back just because we move away or just because we lost his love. But it's an irrevocable covenanted love, even if we don't love. He continues to love. And his abundant goodness means the goodness that doesn't have a measure, but it continues. And it talks about mercy. This is unconditional love of the good shepherd towards us, whom the father has chosen and entrusted to us, to him. He loves them with a sovereign love that can never be extinguished. A love that can never be extinguished. Even when we are faithless, the Bible says he remains faithful to us. I want to repeat that. Even though we are faithless, he remains faithful to us. Amen. I don't have much time. I'm going to close here. But I want to tell you in conclusion, there is never a single day in which the faithful favor of the Lord will not be closed behind us. Goodness and mercy will be with us all day, every day, for the rest of our lives. And we can never escape the loyal love of our Good Shepherd. I just want to reiterate just four things. The Lord is our good shepherd. He cares for us. He provides for us. He guides us. And he protects us. Father, we thank you for this morning. And Lord, for the meditation of your word. And Lord, we pray that wherever we are, Lord, in our walk with you, there's one thing that we are assured of, that you alone are our good shepherd, Lord. And we shall not want. Lord, you care for us. You watch over us, Lord Jesus. Yes, Lord. Father, we thank you. We thank you, Father, that, uh, Lord, you provide every need that we have in our lives. And not only do you provide but beyond what we need, you give us, Lord Jesus. We want to thank you, Father, that 
Lord, you guide us, Lord, in those places, on those paths, which are uncertain and we don't know. But Lord, we know one thing, that you have promised that wherever we go, we are not alone, but you are always with us, Father. And we thank you, Father, that even though we go through storms of life, even though we go through challenges or those dark ravines, Lord Jesus, we thank you, Father, that your word says that you will protect us and you will watch over us. And finally, we thank you, Lord, that goodness and mercy, Lord, will always shadow us, will always follow us every day and every moment of our lives. Goodness and mercy, your unconditional love, your never-ending goodness, your covenanted love. Yes, Lord, your irrevocable love will follow us every day and every moment of our lives. We just thank you, Father, and we speak, Lord, your blessing upon every family that is here. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. May the Lord bless every one of you. Thank you. Over to you, Priya.